What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is another top 10 video. This time around, I'm doing my top 10 TV shows of all time. Now look, similar to my more recent video of top 10 horror films of all time, this is a video that I've been putting off doing for years. And it's not because I didn't want to do it. It's simply because it's such a difficult video to do. Um, I've seen a lot of TV shows. Of course, there are other TV shows that I haven't seen that I'm trying to get around to. So maybe I will do an updated video in a couple of years or so. But as of right now, I'm going to be giving you guys my top 10 TV shows. I'll be going from 10 to 1 with 1 being the best. But before that, I'm going to give you guys honorable mentions. Now, the honorable mentions, the way it's going to work is I'm going to give you guys the honorable mentions that's furthest from the number 10 slot to the one that's closest to the number 10 slot, a.k.a. The last honorable mention will be the one that was so, so close to making the top 10 list, but just unfortunately didn't. And also, it goes without saying, my list is going to be different from yours, and that's okay. Honestly, I'm excited to see the differences in lists, because I'm sure there's going to be shows that you guys are going to mention that I'm then going to look at and say, okay, i got to either add this to the list, or okay, this will go up higher on the list in terms of me needing to watch it. Because there are a couple shows, I'm just going to say right off the bat, such as Justified and Sons of Anarchy, that I still need to watch, and they are as of right now, next up on my list in terms of watching. But guys, enough exposition. Let's get started with the honorable mentions. So the first honorable mention, we're going to give The Wire that slot. The uh, Wire was a show that was a game changer when it came out. And honestly, it gave me a lot of insights. Specifically speaking, that that season where it was focused on the, the schools, that was something that I found to be eye-opening. It was really, really good. Um, the Wire is not a show I come back to that much. I watched it five years ago, but it is a show I have a great, great admiration and respect for, and I can definitely see why some people would have this in their top three. It is quite a good show, and um, yeah, it's why I will mention. Next up, we have The Sopranos. So The Sopranos, similar to The Wire, I can see and have much admiration as to how it really changed the TV industry and brought forth the, uh, the golden age of TV, so to speak. Um, I do like The Sopranos. I do. I don't love it. Um, but I do think that it is quite good. And again, a lot of shows that you'll see um, that are in my top 10 were heavily influenced by The Sopranos. So no Sopranos, no these TV shows that you'll see in my top 10. So again, I have a lot of admiration for The Sopranos. I don't love it, but I do think it's pretty good. And um, similar to The Wire, I do think rewatchability value is hampered by this, where I, I don't really have any, uh, you know, want to rewatch it. But who knows, maybe I will in the future. But I still quite like it, and I can see why a lot of people will have this in their top three as well. Um, next up, we have Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul had a uh, first couple seasons that I really wasn't a big fan of, but um, the second half of its run really made up for that. And I think that season six in particular was just outstanding stuff. Really, really good. Um, makes me want to rewatch the show as a whole, um, so that way maybe I'll appreciate the earlier seasons even more so. But I still like Better Call Saul quite a bit. Um, and yeah, that's why it's an honorable mention. Next up, we have Deadwood. Deadwood was only three seasons. It's another HBO show similar to, uh, of course, The Wire and Sopranos. And Deadwood, I think, is just, it's underappreciated these days. Like, when it came out, it got a bunch of Emmy nominations in terms of, like, the acting. And the acting is fantastic. But I think the humor doesn't get talked enough. The character development, um, there's just a lot to appreciate also with the aesthetics, the production design. It is quite unfortunate, though, that season three does kind of end um, abruptly. There is a Deadwood movie, which is entertaining for sure, but it's nothing, like, amazing. But overall, it's a good show. I definitely would say watch Deadwood. It is a uh, gleefully violent and uh, profane TV show, but it's it's quite good. Uh, next up, we have Six Feet Under. So Six Feet Under was consistently really good. And the final season, though, is what really... Uh, took it to the next level. In particular, the series finale. The series finale tied everything together in an incredible way and honestly garnered tears from my eyes. I loved the series finale of Six Feet Under, and I do think that it is a really, really good show. And the show was so good that a TV show that I was on the, um, uh, you know, I, I was undecided about, that, and that TV show is Dexter. Uh, Michael C. Hall was so great in Six Feet Under that I was like, you know what, I'm going to give Dexter a shot. I'm glad that I did, because I do think that Dexter was quite good. But Michael C. Hall's performance was that great that it made me want to watch Dexter. So, got to thank Six Feet Under. And overall, it is a show I just feel like not. it doesn't get talked about enough. And the premise itself is so good. And how they go and deep dive into character studies through that, it's really good. They do a really good job of analyzing dysfunctional family and just the concept of death is something that also is tackled very heavily and done in such a really good way. Please watch Six Feet Under. It's 
not talked about as much similar to Deadwood, but it should be. And next up, we have Succession. So Succession, it's funny because I <laughs> I watched success, Succession from the very beginning. Um, many people, I think, got into Succession around season three, and I, I can respect that. But it was kind of cool to see how it went from season one, two to good to then three, four were amazing. Like season four in particular was just outstanding. It was one great episode after another. I think um, Connor's Wedding episode three of season four might be my favorite episode of the series, but the series finale itself was also incredible. It's just an overall very well put together show. And I really do think the style complements very well with the characters, the humor, the drama. It's just acting, firing on all cylinders. I love Succession and um, yeah, that's why it's an honorable mention. Next up, we have BoJack Horseman, a depressing animated show that definitely is not for kids. This is a show 100% geared towards adults. And I gotta say, I felt, watching this show, I felt very therapeutic, especially the last season. I just, I got very emotional during a lot of this show. I think that was surprising too, given that season one, I wasn't 100% on board with, but this is a, a nice instance of a show where each season gets better and better. Um, I really liked Spojack Horseman. I think that it should definitely be seen. I think it's currently on Netflix. So please check out Bojack Horseman. And next up we have, I actually own these, um, The Leftovers. So I own Leftovers season one and two. Um, season three, I didn't pick up because it didn't come with a slipcover or a digital code. So I was like, eh, whatever. But um, all three seasons are really good. Um, season one though has an incredible theme song. Easily my favorite theme song. Um, season two though, I think is the most well put together. And season three, does have a lot of really, really good elements. I think that it is a show that, specifically speaking, if, um, if you've read the Bible and you know about the rapture and everything, I think that this is such a great depiction of an event that's similar to that. Um, it's, it's interesting, too, how you see many different perspectives on this event that occurs. Uh, I highly recommend The Leftovers. It's another HBO show that's just really, really good. That's why it's an honorable mention. And my last honorable mention, this is one that was so close to making the list. Um, I, I wanted it to make my list so bad, actually. But um, my last time I'll mention is Veep. So Veep, easily, is probably the funniest show that I've seen. But it's not even just that it's funny. It's that it's one of those rare comedy shows that I've seen where it actually has overarching storytelling, overarching character development. It's not just like an episode by episode basis where it's like, oh, this character is doing this. And that's like the next episode, they just simply forgot that they were doing that. No, it's none of that. There is actually enriching themes, enriching messages, uh, character development that's quite strong. I mean, you see these characters change over the course of several seasons, but you also see several characters that don't change. Uh, the character of Jonah, I think in particular, is such an interesting, hilarious character, especially what they do with him in season seven. Phenomenal. Um, it's, it's a very, very clever show with a season finale, a series finale, I should say, that is just really, really excellent. Uh, I love Veep. I am looking to possibly get it on physical media because I love it that much, so I can rewatch it many, many times. But yeah, watch Veep. It's great. And uh, yeah, that's my last time I will mention. All right, guys, now we get into the top 10, 10 to 1. So my number 10, we have Oz. This is an HBO TV show that aired the 90s to early 2000s, and it is outstanding. I think that this show is so, so undervalued these days. Like, this is a show that while watching it, I couldn't help but get caught up in all these characters and the drama that ensues because these characters are never safe. There are so many characters that die in this show, so much drama that ensues because of certain events of the violent nature. It's just an overall show that if you really are interested in character development, um, just Really, really enthralling drama. I would highly recommend you watch it. It's also got a really interesting style. I am very curious to see if this gets a physical media release in terms of Blu-ray. I know it's out on DVD, but I don't own the DVD. I want to own it on Blu-ray. So if it ever does get a Blu-ray release, I'll definitely be picking it up because I think Oz is great. Not as big of a fan of the final season per se, but I still think that it is a good season of TV. And I think overall, Oz is great. That's why it's my number 10. Next up, we have my number nine, which is Mad Men. So Mad Men is a TV show that I am looking to own. Um, I've actually had my, I've actually had the complete Mad Men um, TV set in my Amazon cart for the last like, year or so, waiting for it to drop and drop, drop even more. Um, because I definitely want to own it, but I also want it to drop in price. Mad Men's a great show, though. Either way, you, you cut and slice it. I love the fact that also Mad Men inspired uh, BoJack Horseman because you have Don Draper, this character that is 
essentially broken, but he's got to hide that. And he also is someone that is quite toxic, but you can't help but get you can't help but get caught up in everything that he's doing. You can't help but, you know, see all these characters surrounding him and how he affects them, but also how they affect him. And it's quite fascinating, too, to see from a season-to-season -season basis just how strong the writing is with not only his character, but the characters surrounding him. I also think that this is a show that it builds to a, a series finale that I... I know some people don't like it, but I actually loved it, particularly the last like couple minutes. I think it is just so, so terrific, honestly. I, I love Mad Men. I really do. Um, I've heard some people say that it's slow or boring. I disagree. I think that each episode is just so rewarding, and it's very well acted, too. I mean, the acting is incredible. John Hamm gives one of the best acting performances I've seen on TV. He's incredible. And Elizabeth Moss, too, I think should get spoken about more. Because she also is great as Peggy in this season, I mean, this series. So, yeah, highly recommend you watch Bad Men. And that's, that's why it's my number nine. Next up, my number eight, we have Dark. So, this is a TV show that is on Netflix. Um, what can I say? This is like a, um, a billion times better version of Stranger Things. It's got elements of Westworld. Um, it's a throwback to like 80s cinema, but then at the same time, not quite. It's also like a throwback to like 1950s, like paranoia. There's a lot of things, a lot of elements from different genres that it is cooking. And it simmers to create something that feels both invigorating, original, thrilling, and quite honestly, just transfixing TV. I loved everything about Dark. I was from frame one, I was immediately caught off guard at how great this show was. And until the end, I just found myself falling in love with these characters, all the twists and turns, just how you also had to pause the TV several times because of just how mind-blowing a lot of the twists and turns were. Because again, it's dealing with, you know, non-linear storytelling, but it's also dealing with different timelines. It's a lot. It's a lot. It might feel like homework for some people, but honestly, sometimes homework is really enriching. And this is definitely a time where Dark is an enriching homework assignment that I would highly recommend. Incredible show. And that's um, and why it's on number eight. Next up, my number seven, we have Fargo. So Fargo is a TV show that I had in my top three for a long time because for several years, I think it was just season one and two. And then season three came out and I liked it quite a bit. I didn't love it as much as these two because honestly, I think these two seasons of TV are some of the best I've ever seen. But season three was still really good. Like I still liked it a lot. Season four then came out and I thought it was solid. But I didn't love, love it. And season five is coming out in a month as the filming of this video. It is coming out in um, the middle, a little bit, actually, I think it's November 21st. November 21st, the fifth season's coming out. So I'm curious about it, I am. But I will say that right now with the four seasons, I think it goes like this. Two masterful TV, TV seasons. Uh, third season that's really, really good. And season four that's just solid. So that fourth season being solid is what made it go from the number like three slot all the way down to number seven slot. But I would still highly recommend you you check out Fargo. I do think it is a shame that after season two, they kind of did away with Blu-rays in terms of um, Fargo. But I got to say, season one and two, they look great on uh, Blu-ray. And um, yeah, I would highly recommend you watch Fargo. It's got a lot of quirky characters, really intriguing storytelling, many twists and turns, a score that's really, really good and melds well with the imagery. Just an overall very clever show, especially season one and two. And um. Yeah, that's why it's for number seven. And next up, oh, my hands are going to be full with this. Next up, we have my number six, which is Westworld. So I own all four seasons, season one, season two, season three, and then season four. Now, if you're new to the channel, um, let me just say this. So season one, I've always loved. I thought season one was incredible. I thought it was phenomenal at with what they were able to really accomplish, especially by that season finale. Season two, I loved as well. I think season two is great and it really gives season one a, a run for its money. I know some people aren't as big of a fan of the um, you know multiple timelines as well as just how uh, there's so much going on. I get that, but I still love season two. And I think what's also impressive about season two is that that season two finale they could have ended the season, the series right there. They could have. It was that satisfying. It was that stick to your ribs. And I'm not going to lie. After watching season three, 
I was like, yeah, they should have ended after season two. Because season three, I just found it to be such a step in the wrong direction. Like, it felt dumbed down. It felt like they were trying to, you know, cater more towards an action crowd versus the cerebral sci-fi crowd of season one and two that also likes the Western genre. Like, season three, it was very streamlined. There wasn't a lot of different timelines. So I was just kind of like, what the heck? It's not a bad season of TV. It's just, like, solidish. So it's, like, it's definitely something that brought the series down. But season four then came around, and I thought season four was actually really, really good. I think in particular, the last couple of episodes of season four just really, really bring everything full circle. And honestly, made me appreciate certain elements of season three a bit more. It's that great. And um, ironically, on, my, on the day of my wedding, one of my friends told me that season four was the final season and that the show was canceled. I was happy because I thought season four, the way that it ended, it was like, there's no other way. Just... End it here, please. I literally said that in my, my review for season four. You guys can check, check that out. I literally said that. So hearing that it was the final season, I was very glad because I was like, okay, you have three great seasons and then you have one season that's solid-ish. So I'll take it. I love Westworld. I think that it is a great blend of genres. It's got incredible acting, a great, great score by my boy Raymond. Phenomenal cinematography. I mean, it's one of the rare shows where it's actually shot on film. So that's also something that's just really really taking advantage of and that's the other thing too is that i'm glad that uh warner brothers released these on 4k physical media because man you want to watch this the best way possible and it definitely holds up very well in 4k so yeah i love westworld and uh yeah that's why it's my number six all right guys so now we're getting into the nitty-gritty the top five so my number five we have twin peaks so truthfully speaking, I was just going to say Twin Peaks The Return, but I realized that if I said Twin Peaks The Return, that's looked at as just like one season of TV as opposed to a TV show, which means that if I was to include just Twin Peaks The Return, then that means I could have included Chernobyl and Watchmen, which I wanted to include both, but both are technically a limited series. So uh, that's why I'm just, it's just saying all three seasons of Twin Peaks. I think that Twin Peaks is such a great show. I think season one is great. Season two, it has an interesting start and an interesting last couple of episodes. But everything in between season two, it is truthfully a mess. It is. Um, there was a lot of behind the scenes drama with the second season because one of the big things is that Laura Palmer was something that was never supposed to be solved in terms of who murdered her. Um, but the studio did not like that. So in season two, they answered that question. David Lynch left the show for... The middle episodes, so it really shows how he, David Lynch's style is something that can't really be met because when you watch his middle episodes, it's not that good. It really isn't. It's like, ugh, yikes. But then when he's back in the director's chair, it's like, okay, these episodes are a lot stronger. Then we get to Twin Peaks The Return. And Twin Peaks The Return is one of the best um, TV seasons I've ever seen. I think Twin Peaks The Return is something that is great. Because it, it's one of those things where on paper, it's like, okay, so this is just like a cash grab, just like all those other TV shows and movies that are trying to bring back, um, you know, legacy TV shows and legacy movies. And it's like, no, this this feels earned, especially because the finale of season two literally says, see you in 25 years. And guess what? We got seen in 25 years with uh, Twin Peaks The Return. So I think that it's one of the few shows that actually warrants having a new, a new season come out all these years later. And it works brilliantly um D D david lynch's style was in full effects though like if you like eraserhead if you like mahalan drive or lost hallway that style of his is in full effect with twin peaks the return so i would highly recommend you check out twin peaks um watching twin peaks you'll be able to see that it influenced tv a lot a lot so yeah highly recommend you watch it specifically of course twin peaks the return but you kind of have to watch season one and two to really fully appreciate twin peaks the return but uh, my favorite episode of the TV show is probably um, Gotta Light, episode 8 of uh, Twin Peaks The Return. So, yeah, I love this show. I really do. And, um, yeah, that's why it's my number five. Next up, my number four, we have Hannibal. So Hannibal aired from 2013 to 2015. And um, I'll never forget my uh, critical viewing teacher recommending this, the show, saying that it is one of the best shot TV shows that he's ever seen. And he's not wrong. Uh, I've seen this show many times and the cinematography still blows my mind. I actually found out yesterday um, watching an interview that apparently the show had like a very strict budget. You would not think that given the fact of how much style is oozing from this show. Uh, how high budget it looks, honestly. Like it looks 
incredible, especially compared to a lot of other TV shows that you'll see. It's one of the best shot TV shows, but it also has a lot of really interesting storytelling techniques that are utilized. It's got a great score. Love the acting. Mads Wilkinson uh, and Hugh Dancy, their chemistry together is just phenomenal. Um, the Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter uh, battle of season two in particular is just something that I love. Season two is the best of this of the show, in my opinion, but I still love season one. And I do think that season three it has some flaws, but I still love season three a lot too. I think that overall, if you want a very artsy show that is willing to challenge you as a viewer, highly recommend you watch Hannibal. I think it is great. Uh, this is the third straight year in a row where I'm watching this this season. Uh, I mean, this series, I should say, and then going from that to then Silence of the Lambs. I highly recommend you do that because it is something that is very intriguing to say the least. Seeing Mads Wilkinson's performance as Hannibal Lecter. Uh, and then watching Anthony Hopkins' performance as Hannibal Lecter. They both do a great job uh, for different reasons. But yeah, highly, highly recommend you watch Hannibal. It is great. Oh, also, um, it goes without saying, but if you if you haven't seen the show before and you're asking yourself, well, it was canceled. Does it end in a satisfying way? It does. It does, which is nice. But yeah, that is my number four. Next up, my number three. Um, this was tough. My number... My number two and three, I, I constantly go back and forth on this, but my number three is Game of Thrones. So I own Game of Thrones on 4K, and this is a show that I love, man. Fargo, Game of Thrones, and my number two are all shows that really changed me as a TV show viewer. Like, not going to lie, before I saw Fargo in 2014, I didn't really watch TV shows. I watched like sitcoms from the past. So it was one of those things where I was like, okay, it's a lesser form than film. Again, not really realizing that Sopranos changed the uh, landscape and that we would get shows like Fargo and then of course Game of Thrones. So uh, Fargo planted the seed of changing my mindset on terms of TV shows, but Game of Thrones really fulfilled that and said, yep, you're going to look at TV shows just as great as films, if not better at times. And Game of Thrones is definitely a great example of that because it's just incredible, man, how it's able to mix um, medieval politics, uh, fantasy, drama, romance. It's able to build all these different genres seamlessly, and it works. You care about these characters. You care about, you know, everything that's going on in this storytelling. The world building is phenomenal. There's just a lot to appreciate. I know people don't love season seven and eight as much as the first six seasons. I can respect that because I do think that whilst season one to six are perfect or near perfect season seven and eight do have their flaws but i would be lying if i said that i didn't like them because i actually do quite like both a bit even though there are some elements that do frustrate me but overall i do love game of thrones i do and i do think that it is a great series and that is why it's my number three next up my number two um fargo game of thrones and this were all huge game changers in terms of me as a viewer in terms of tv shows my number two we have Breaking Bad. So yeah, Breaking Bad, uh, I mean, it goes without saying, I'm sure that this is like a cliche at this point because many people, uh, I feel like, were also changed by Breaking Bad. But I gotta say, watching Breaking Bad, it just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is amazing to see how there is so much buildup from season to season, so much great world building, character development, dialogue, and also the blending of drama, thriller, uh, comedy at times. There's just a lot to really invest yourself in in this world that Vince Gilligan creates. I think that Breaking Bad also is similar to Hannibal because Hannibal Season 2 easily could have ended right there and same with Westworld Season 2. Breaking Bad also is interesting in that uh, Season 4, the finale, easily could have been the finale of the show. Um, if it had gotten canceled, it would have still been a great, great finale. But... They got greenlit for season five, which they broke up into two parts. And season five, after watching it, it's like, yeah, I'm glad they made a season five because the season five is also just as great, if not better. Um, it's amazing how the show was crafted. And I do have to say, I definitely can see where The Sopranos heavily influenced Breaking Bad. But I got to say, I like Breaking Bad better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's a debate. But uh, I love Breaking Bad. And that's why it's my number two. Next up, my number one, some of you might have guessed this, but my number one is Mr. Robot. So Mr. Robot, it's interesting because I remember one of my best friends, uh, John, shout out to him. Uh, when season one came out, he recommended it to me and I watched it and I loved it. Season two came out and I just wasn't that big of a fan of. So I was like, 
fine. I guess I'll watch season three when it comes out. I watched season three. I really wasn't that big of a fan. I think just mentally, I just wasn't there. Um, and it wasn't until um, a couple years later, I think it was, I decided to give it a second chance, like Mr. Robot, like start from the beginning um, in preparation for season four. And I'm glad that I did that because re-watching seasons one to three, I just found myself loving it more and more. Um, I picked up on so many different details, so many different foreshadowing. Uh, it just It's an overall, similar to Breaking Bad, it's an overall show that you can tell was plans very meticulous. Don't get me wrong, there was some uh, wiggle room, but there's a lot, a lot of meticulous nature to everything that was planned. I mean, for crying out loud, episode one of Mr. Robot planted seeds that season five, I mean, season four, I should say, fulfilled. It's amazing that a show is able to do that, but Mr. Robot did that. Um, it's great to see the show. It really is. Very well acted. Rami Malek gives easily one of the best performances. Um, the ability of these characters being so well written, whilst at the same time the creators and the writers are not scared to um, kill these off, these characters off, is also something that really puts you on edge because you're like, nobody is safe. And that, that feeling goes until the finale. It's that great. Um, I love the villain. White Rose, I think, is someone that is so nuanced, has so many interesting um, traits. I think it's a show that... If you've been sleeping on, please watch Mr. Robot. I highly, highly recommend it. It doesn't get talked about enough, and I think it's because it's a USA Network show. But please, it is so, so great. Watch Mr. Robot. I highly, highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, that's why it's my number one. But yeah, guys, I'm very curious to see your guys' ranking um, in terms of TV shows that you guys like. Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Love the subscription, notification bell, follow me down the letterbox, and I will... Catch you guys later.